What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. Now, for some of y'all, some of y'all are upset with me. Some of y'all don't even know what's going on. But I want to put this out there uh, because accidents happen when you're on this, uh, on this side of the camera. So first of all, NLE Chopper put out a damn a tattoo with Krishan's face on it, which is one of the lamest things I've ever seen a man do on this internet, at least this year, okay? And everybody's sending it to me, so I'm like, let me put this out, but I need to add something to it because it's not much to say. That's stupid. Why would you do that? You look thirsty. Take it off, right? So, boom. I put out the video with the lies he told on TikTok because it's a good it's a good uh, little Tubi series right now, right? Which we're going to get into a lot more of those because y'all enjoy it. So, boom. I put it out without the damn tattoo video. So, I had the wrong title, wrong thumbnail, just wrong everything. <laughs> I want to put this out there. I don't clickbait. Okay? If anything happened, clearly it's an accident. I will correct it. Okay? When you're on this side of the camera, you have to entertain, work, and make sure you keep up with the lineup of everything happening, which means there will never be perfection on this end. So with that being said, thank you to those that understand. Hopefully y'all understand. I don't do the clickbait thing. I corrected it soon as y'all told me about it. Thank God some of y'all did because I wouldn't have known because I did not know. All right. Now, YouTube yellow boyed me. And for those that don't know what it is, ask down in the comments. But they're not trying to let me put up this tattoo, okay, um, and actually green it. They're not. It's not happening. He got a towel on, uh, body wet. He in a shower. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? If y'all really want to know how I feel about it, what are you doing? This is the lamest thing I've seen him do to date, okay? So, no, I'm not for it at all. He looks stupid, and that's where I am with it, Okay. But clearly, I can't show y'all the picture, so go look on Instagram, okay? Now, we are about to get into this um, because something is going on with Bluefus, all right? First of all, Krishan said, free my baby daddy. I love you. You got this baby, all right? Everybody was trying to figure out why on this good morning at 6.02 a.m. on Beyonce's internet, are you speaking about Bluefus, okay? She's speaking about Bluefus because... He and his assigned housing date has been changed, okay? Permanent housing assigned date was originally 116-2024, clearly at the Men's Central Jail at 1137, okay? Now, it has changed to 3-1-2024 um, at 1502, okay? Now, for those that are YouTube lawyers, y'all would know what this means, Hot Tea Hot Chocolate said, which is my source, you dig what I'm saying? She said, looks like there was a housing status change move within the jail for Bluefus. Maybe we will know if Nevada picks him up or not any minute now. So it could either be one or two things to my knowledge. What do I know, right? Um, Nevada either is like, yo, L.A., chill out, keep him there, we coming. Okay? Or... He's serving a longer time in L.A., okay? It's one of the two. He doesn't, I don't know, he might have gotten in trouble because he in there fighting. Who knows, okay? So I know that if they change this and we, gonna find, we found that out, we'll be able to find out what's actually going on for real. So that is what I want to give y'all. Um, I wanted to put the tattoo in the middle of this video, Literally right after I'm done with this, because you you know you just gotta this this is like Russian roulette when with with YouTube. For those that is on this side of the camera, you know, I may or may not because I don't have time to wait for the yellow marking and all that. But I will put about twenty to twenty five minutes of the lies he told on this. It is a really good little series. She <laughs> first of all, um. Who the F did I marry? She was just on an interview on TV yesterday. <laughs> so it's paying off for the ladies, I guess. Um, I want to put it in there because it is entertaining. It's really good. She ain't the best storyteller, but it's a good story. Okay. So I'm going to do that. 
If y'all see the tattoo, you do. If you, if you don't, you don't. I don't have time for them to keep telling me they're going to check to see if it's good or not. Okay? So, I apologize for putting it out wrong the other day. Didn't mean no harm. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all of this down in the comment section below. Enjoy the rest of this video for the series. What's up, y'all? Got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. So, this is part six of, um, well, part six and, until I stop of uh, Jillian. Let's get it. Six, the lies he told. So, before I found out about all of the lies, he explained to me about how he met his ex-wife. He told me that him and his ex-wife, they met in high school. They were actually high school sweethearts, went to prom together, the whole nine. They had been together for years. He told me that shortly after they graduated, they decided to go ahead and get married down in Louisiana. And he told me that him and her were unable to ever conceive a child. Due to the fact that he was very obese in the earlier part of his life and also up until around the age of 28 because he did tell me that he got the gastric sleeve surgery. He told me that it was impossible for him to have kids. His stuff just didn't work. And I said, wow, that's, that's, that's crazy. He said, and to be honest with you, it is so crazy that you got pregnant by me because... I didn't ever think I would be able to have kids. I said, well, I mean, you done lost a lot of weight, babe. Like, you know, I'm trying to be encouraging. I'm trying to let him know like, hey, you know, you're not big no more. Because at that point, I saw that there was a lot of, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, low self-esteem there. So I was like, I don't want you to start feeling insecure about yourself. You know, it's okay. So... We move on. He talks to me about the whole story about what I said in part five about how he caught her cheating with the man, yada, 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 you know. So as I have now currently found out that he was never married, I approach him about it. I say, hey, I could not find a divorce decree or marriage license for you. And he 186 now. He was back. That's why. I said, so, of sure. course, right. I have told you this before, and I'm going to tell you this again. If I ask you a question, I already know the answer to it. So you might as well go ahead and let me know. Have you ever been married in your life? Cap. That man looked at me like he always do. And he sat with that shit. And he said, yeah, we got married. Yeah, babe, I told you I was married. I said, okay, cool. All right, cool. So once again, I had to tell him, I talked to your daddy. Your daddy said you ain't never been married to Paris. He had to flip that shit so quick. He said, I don't really want you talking to my daddy. I said, and why is that? He said, because my daddy lie a lot. Oh, my God. I said, okay. He said, "My of course, my daddy ain't going to tell you about Paris because I call him trying to fuck Paris at a house party. Baby, the tickets to the fight, $355. Two, two, two in the chat. I said, do what? He said, yeah, the nigga trying to fuck his own daughter-in-law. I said, come on, bro. He said, man, my daddy get high, he get drunk, he get fucked up. And to be honest with you, he 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 will try to fuck you too. I'm going to just be honest. And I said, no, nah, I don't get that from Pop. I don't get that from Pop. Now, I do understand that people have a past. There may have been times where his daddy may have gotten a little too loose in certain situations, but I did not believe that his daddy tried to hit on the ex-girlfriend. And at this time, you know, he was saying his ex-wife. I did not believe that. So I ended up finding Paris on Facebook. I did not approach her. I did not communicate with her at all. But I did go to her Facebook page and I did notice that she was currently still living in Houston, Texas. She did have on her profile that she was single. There were no pictures of her and Jared. She was currently in Houston. Like there were pictures of her at different places in Houston, <laughs> different places. She was not in Germany. She was not in Germany. Not at all. And she does not even look like the type that would even be a teacher. I really don't know what her profession is, but she did not look like that type. So he said, 
And speaking of Paris, she was at my job two weeks ago. I said, at your job doing what? He said, she was up there with her homegirls. I said, but I thought you told me that she lived in Germany. He said, man, she, she told me that she was back for a couple of weeks. He's still lying. Still fucking lying. I said, he here for a couple of weeks. If she here for a couple of weeks, I said, that doesn't even make sense, Jared. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. So, and all in all, I did get him to admit to me that he had never been married. He ain't never had no kids and he never did live in that house. I did get him to admit that. And I also told him, I said, Jared, mm -hmm. I do know that you were born in said hospital at said time and said date. I said, so right now, this is the time where we really stop the lies because for whatever reason, you have a problem. I need to get these and tickets and resell them. I'm not the type of woman that you have to lie to because I would have liked you regardless without the lies. Now, granted, people, I do know that there were several red flags before we got here. I already know this. In the back of my head, I knew that I ain't want to be, I didn't want to be a woman with two babies to baby day I ain't want that for my life so I try working with him through it on the next part I will tell you about how we tried to do counseling premarital counseling and how they went sure. part seven the lies he told you can't counsel a liar so now at this point, I'm we're just moving listening. into that place where we really need to do what? premarital counseling. And honestly, we need to do personal <laughs> counseling. <laughs> he needs his own therapist. I need my own therapist. And I told him, I said, you know, um, I am willing to walk and to work with you through anything. But you cannot continue to keep lying to me. Seven, seven, seven. You cannot keep doing this. I told him that I was unaware if he had been lying his entire life, but I know that I am going to continue three, three, three in the chat for you. I still wanted to be married. I still desired to be married so badly. And I stuck with that man through premarital counseling, through all of that. So we started going through counseling. And I'm not going to lie. The lady handled the both of us with a lot of grace. Um, she triggered a lot of demons within that relationship. She really did. Up to the point where he told me, he said, hey, I think she's biased. I really want a male to do our counseling. Let's not go to her anymore. And I agreed. I told her, I told him, I said, you know, if you feel that way, I do want the both of us to be comfortable. So if you do feel that she is biased or, you know, if you don't think she's the best fit, we can most definitely move forward with another counselor. So we tried allowing my cousin and his wife to counsel us. And then that's when I broke the ice and I told them, y'all, this man is literally an habitual liar. Like he is a liar. And I don't know if I am taking the right step here. They told me that I should basically investigate <laughs> on why he's lying like this. And what, like, in other words, ask him, why does he feel like he needs to lie to you? And then build from there. It's nothing to discuss. Liars yeah, lie. His reason to all of us for why he was lying was because he knew that in order to keep a woman of my caliber, he knew that he was going to have to have himself together. He knew that. And what dawned on me so crazy was that I had dated men that didn't have a dime to their name. Stupid. And they still was honest and they still was trustworthy. And then I turned around and got crossed up with a man that did nothing but lie to me. He, he was paying some bills, but... I deserve better. So, and all in all, marriage counseling did not work for us. Well, premarital counseling, it did not work for us. <clears throat> I prayed. 
I got through it. He went to every doctor's appointment with me, you know, for a kid. He was there every step of the way. And I said to myself, I said, you know what? Like, I'm going to take this chance. It was stupid. It was the dumbest thing. But once again, this was on me. This was totally on me. So I knew that I was dealing with a liar. Child. I knew that I knew the things that he lied about. That was one thing. But I also told him, like, hey, don't lie to me about nothing else. Like, let's not do that. Like, come on. So now I want to take you. Into How can you feel bad for a woman like this? Meeting his mom. Are we going to continue this? Are we going to continue this? I'd be exhausted from them just accepting the lies. He told me that he would never lie to me again. That's what he told me. I told him no ever lie to me again. Do lesbians do this? First of all, everybody that breathes has dealt with a liar. But not to these magnitudes. Like, oh, he be lying. Girl, I can't. Mm -mm. I don't want to do this no more. Maybe let me not get pregnant and stuff by him. I need, I need Krishan OnlyFans. Um, I need to see her OnlyFans. I don't see it. I'm waiting on voice to send it. So, yeah, for some people, I don't feel bad for certain things that they decide to put themselves through. Try one more. I'm winded of the lies. Part eight, the li part seven, the lies he told. So now we're moving into that place where we really need to do premarital counseling. Okay. Part eight, the lies he told. So at this time, I tell him like, hey, I, I really want to go ahead and meet your mom. We at least- Why at would I meet your mom? Anywhere between two to three months in the game. I said, hey, I, I really in feel two to like three this months? time that I meet your mom. You've met my family. I've met only your father. I met a couple of your cousins when we was over there visiting with your daddy. So let me meet your mom. He tells me, babe, remember I told you my mom is a doctor and you know, her availability is a little tight. I said, okay, cool, 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 cool. I said, but still, I really do need to meet her. Now, prior to me meeting her, when he told me that his mama was a doctor, when I found out his mama name, I did a Google search because he told me that she owned her own practice oh. and she did, uh, it was like a, um, she was like a, a primary care physician. Like she did everybody, babies, you know, adults, you know, she she was just a PCP all around, but she had her own practice. Now I looked up all practices in Houston, Texas and surrounding areas. Her name did not come up as being a physician. Her name did not come up come as on. being uh, someone that owned their own practice. So I was concerned about that as well. Why would you be concerned? So, you know, he's lying. Uh, he contacted her. He never told me like a date and a time that we were going to meet. One Saturday, I was at home. I probably was laying in the bed. He called me because he was at work at Phil and Dibs, and he said, babe, my mom, she gonna, she gonna pull up. Uh, if you wanna meet her, you know, you can come on through. Bet, I'm on my way. Put on clothes, got up there, and his mama came roughly shorter after I got there. Excuse me. I said, <clears throat> um, I walked outside, I went and met her, and I said, Hi, it's so nice to meet you. He said, Mama, this is Jillian. Jillian, this is my mama. I said, it's, it's, it's really nice to meet you. She looked me up and down, and her first question to me was, Who is your OBGYN? Ma'am, hello? How you how you doing, ma'am? Who Who's your OBGYN? I said, Dr. Kathy Sander at, at Kelsey Sebo, one of the best in the nation. 
Okay, I know some folks over at Kelsey Seabold. I can always make a phone call if I need to. No, I don't need your now, phone at call. at the time, I'm looking because I'm saying to myself, oh, maybe she's just concerned about the well-being of her grandchild, and if something were to ever happen, maybe, you know, if I needed assistance or something, she could make a phone call. That's not what that was at all. Not what that was at all. After she asked that question, I said, oh, oh, okay. And she said, so I have another question, though. Um, you you and him, y'all met pretty fast. You, you already, you already pregnant by him? trying to insinuate that there is no way that I could be pregnant by her child. Ma'am, it have been two or three months. We have been back to back, ma'am. So, yeah, this is baby. And this then you back to back sex and a liar? Every pump would be, I just nigga be lying to me. I couldn't even. His baby. Ain't nobody else been at my Ooh, house child. but your son. Yes, ma'am, this is, this is your baby. So that had already put a bad, sour taste in my mouth about her because now you asking inappropriate, conversa uh, inappropriate questions in, a conversa in our first conversation at that. So I, I had a little trouble trying to have... I mean, the apple don't fall too far. Okay. Respect for a woman that was so disrespectful to me at the very first attempt. So later on that day, he comes home or later on that night he comes home and I say to him you know hey uh, I didn't really want to bother you about this when you was at work however um, it, it, it really bothered me about what your mom said when I met her and he said well um, what, what did Has she who say ever been I, digmatized? I really wasn't kind of paying attention and granted he was not he was at work so he kind of left us alone <laughs> a couple of times and I mean, after she said what she said, I kind of like walked off and I was like, all right, I'm about to go ahead and go on back to the house. I've been pushing I remember calling my mama and telling my mama, hey, I met Jerry mama. Boom, this is what she said. My mama was like, what type of bullshit is that? My mama, y'all ignorant and I'm gonna get to her too. So, <laughs> so um, I told him, I said, I ain't really appreciate that. He asked me what she said. I ran it to him and he said, babe, I had already told you, I really didn't want you to meet her. He always I referred see. to her as her first name. He never really called her mom. He never did. So I said, okay, I said, I, I understand that you told me that she really didn't like any of your past relationships or past women or whatever. However, I am going to be the mother of your first child. Like, does that not ring a bell to, to her? I said, is she not gonna be like the grandmama type you know somebody that we would be able to rely on to like help us with the kid he said oh yeah she'll be good for that i'm sure she's pretty excited about the baby but this all just happened so fast granted it did it did happen so fast okay cool i said no problem so i get on the phone you know me and his daddy we chopping it up and i i, I tell his daddy i said you know hey you know i met his mom <clears throat> you know where 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 does she work at because Jared told me she's a she's a doctor and she had the audacity to be asking me all about my physician name and stuff like that. I said, so you know what's her deal? He said, man, that's just who she is, bro. That's just who she is. She she always been like that. He said, but wait a minute now. She ain't no damn doctor. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that now. He said, if anything, she's an LVN. I said, an LVN? He said, man, that girl a damn nurse. She ain't no, he said, I don't even think she's a registered nurse. I said, no, bro, this, 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 this woman got to be a doctor. She got to be a doctor. Like, ain't no way this man that told me that his mama is a damn doctor and she's a damn LVN or an RN. His daddy never lied to me. Do you hear me? His daddy never lied to me. Come to find out his mama was an RN going to school to be a nurse practitioner at the time that I met him. Asking me about my damn OBGYN. Girl, if you don't get the hell on, that's where you get it from. When I tell you, when I had that conversation with his daddy, I waited a couple of days or so. And I asked him, he was driving, he was driving me somewhere. And I asked him, I said, your mama a doctor where again? He said, remember, you know, I told you she 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 got her own practice or whatever. I said, your mama are in. Your daddy told me your mama are in. He said, no, my, my, my mama, my mama most definitely, my mama most definitely a doctor. I said, okay, baby. I said, call your mama right now. Call <laughs> her on the phone vocational right nurse. Now. 
and he did. But he did not put his mama on speakerphone. But I seen him dial his mama number. He said, Ma, what you tell me you was in school for? She obviously answered. I have no idea what she said to him. And she asked him, why you asked me that? He said, I, I, just, I just couldn't remember what you told me you was going to school for. He hung up. I said, so is she a doctor or not? He said, ah, she in, she's in school to uh, get her uh, master's in nursing. I said, so she's not an MD. Your mama ain't no doctor. I said, so that's not, that's not making any sense to me. Once again, once again now, that's another lie that he told that he could have killed. Why, why in the world would you tell somebody that your mama is a full ass MD when she ain't nothing but a damn RN? Why? But why would you stay with somebody who has already lied to you? If that nigga lied to you by having a child, Why would you say that? Part nine, I'm going back to the timeline of our relationship, but I had to get that out about me meeting his mom. I'm tired, boss. Watching them go through this and put they self through this. It is unbecoming. It is unbecoming. <laughs> she needed company, Nick, at this point. <sighs> part nine, the lies he told. I stated at the very end of part eight that I was going to get back to the timeline of our relationship so that I can really get down to the nitty gritty of why I am doing this testimony. Uh, I do want to clarify a couple of things before I start part, now, part nine, however, because I do see all of your comments, the negative ones and the positive ones. Uh, to address a couple of the negative ones, I understand that you may be confused. Uh, maybe you're expecting me to be exactly like Miss Risa Tisa. That's not going to happen. I'm a totally different woman and okay. I have a totally different story. It may sound similar, sure. but trust and believe hands were thrown in mine to the point where almost with some killing happening. So oh, shit. I, I'll get to that. But, you know, let me just be clear that I'm going to tell this story the way that I'm going to tell it. And killing if you can around for it, try to go and watch somebody else because it looks like a lot of women now are coming out with their own story. So uh, thank you for sticking around how you have, but I'm going to keep moving, pushing forward. Um, another thing that I want to clarify, I see a lot of people are still confused about the whole car situation with the tag. That was his mama's car. That was his mama's tag. Okay. The alleged baby was not his real daughter his dad told me that and i confirmed that that was not his real his real baby i also confirmed that he was never married i have also confirmed that he never owned a house with his ex-wife i confirmed that his ex-wife was uh not in germany teaching i have confirmed a lot of things so far why so did you stay with hadn't him hadn't gotten caught up confirm that friend. parts one through eight and now we're going back to part nine all right so Moving along with the timeline, it's all screwed up, guys. It's extremely screwed up. I don't have dates. I'm 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 gonna just be honest. Just keep in mind, my initial meeting with him was January fifth. By the end of January or the beginning of February, we met at my house to have pizza to have a discussion. We did have a one night stand that night. He never left. He gradually started moving things in over a course of time. February 28th, we got engaged. In March, sometime in March, I met his mom. 
let's not forget, I had already met the dad in February. And so his mom is who he was living 